Bonjour. Hola. Konnichiwa. Hello. My name is Sky Lux. I'm a professional musician. Received a degree from uh, Missouri Western State University. Conservatory of Music. I play four to seven instruments, including the acoustic and the electric guitar, which are different. And it is my duty as a sage of music to help guide the uh, young and the weak, which is you, through the valley of darkness, which is music. And it sounds like you're ready to start your career in music if you found this video. Congratulations. It's a very exciting time to be alive. And of course, since technology, as we all know, is just a silly fad, there's no need to learn anything about it since you already didn't. So let's just stick with the classics. Here are some of the many exciting and lucrative options for music careers that await you. Concert soloist. You have only ever practiced one piece at a time. And you have no idea how to play it or anything without a musical teleprompter 11 inches from your eyes. Improvising scares you, you wear scarves in the summer, and you can most likely go minutes without blinking. Thankfully, you are an absolutely incredible reader and have the discipline to practice 25 hours a day, every day, to prepare you for every performance. Unfortunately, you didn't start practicing like this until you were 11, and 20,000 other little gremlins with strict abusive parents started when they were six. So now you're widely underleveled by comparison. And while all of you compete for the one gigs available within 300 miles of you this summer, you start to consider other means of income. Most likely, private teacher. You've decided that you want to be your own boss. You refer to yourself as a business, but you most likely work for a real business. You'll promise that you'll be fed regular students, but instead you get the leftover five middle schoolers from the last teacher who quit, all of which are only there because their mom wanted to day drink wine for the 27th Tuesday in a row, and instead of buying them a PS5 and keeping them busy like a good parent, she justifies catching a free hour by shoving them into a piano lesson that neither of you want to be at. Don't worry, there's a catch. You'll be paying money to this MLM scheme. Just to come to work, you pay a fee to come to work. You've come a long way since selling Mary Kay or knives as a freshman in college. By the way, hit me up if anybody is looking to get like toned for the summer, because like I got a good product for you. Or knives, got knives for life. Or Mary Kay, seriously, someone hit me up. Maybe you've managed to convince a couple gullible students or parents that you really do work for yourself and they can come study at your private studio. This is great. You can set your own rate. You don't have to teach out of the little kid books anymore, and you really are your own boss. Unfortunately, you very quickly realize that the private studio you were referring to is actually just the place you live. And the place you live is just a mattress without a bed frame, confusing arbitrary movie artwork on your walls, and a vague scent of pet hair, even though you don't own any pets. Real teacher. You went to college to do music because you had no idea what you were going to do with your life but you were in band or choir. You came into college knowing four of your 12 major scales and left somehow only knowing three. You justified the fact that all of your performances were terrible with the underlying idea that knowing how to play didn't matter as much because you were just gonna teach. Just like when you stare at a word too long, you have said this out loud so many times that the irony is now completely lost on you and you actually believe it when you say it. Now you spend more time begging for the tiniest scrap of funding from the football budget than you do teaching any actual music fundamentals. A day in the life of your band probably looks like five minutes of uncontrolled and uncoordinated long tones, and then 55 minutes of tuning the clarinets, an instrument that, just like your students, you do not know how to play. Thankfully, you get an actual salary, and potentially, depending on where you live, benefits. Plus, you can put an actual tangible career on your Facebook About Me section, and you are most likely the most successful of all your musician friends. Jazz musician. You pride yourself on how trained your ears and chops are. You memorize the entire real book, which you refer to as a fake book, front to back. You pride yourself in being able to play Down Steps or Giant Lee or whatever in every key, even though nobody will literally ever call any tune you've ever worked on besides Alone Together. And have you met Miss Jones for some reason? This is a great gig if you like dressing up in an $800 suit to make $75. The Thelonious Monk once said to never ask for a gig, just be on the scene and let it happen naturally. Important lesson time, nobody does that. Badger the shit out of everyone all the time for a gig. 
For example, you find yourself in a Tuesday jazz jam session. Pick a target who's got the gigs and the goods. Once you have your target, wait for them to take a solo. Once they do, start making faces that resemble the face you made when you watched an early internet shock video. Follow that up with nodding your head in a vague rhythm that suggests you're really vibing with the music that they're playing. This will let the player know that their playing is disgusting, which is a compliment to the jazz community. The player will be happy that you're paying attention to them, which is exposure, which is what they're getting paid for in that gig. You may find yourself saying things like, play the lick, cats, but as people, I have a heroin problem. Cool train changes, Dilla, does anyone have any heroin? A jazz career is all about transcribing and mastering music from the Queen of Dust Bowl to the Eisenhower administration so that you can perform for audiences of people who have TikTok in their pocket. This is all actually eventually leading to landing a hopeful spot in a wedding band gig, but since there's only one of those in your city and the more attractive version of you already got that gig, you will most likely look into becoming a cruise musician. Your influences might include David Pepsi, Jimmy Buffett, or the movie The Titanic up until the end. You got this gig because it's July and you just realized that you owe $100,000 for a piece of paper that says you're qualified to do something you probably could have learned on the internet. Even though the ship itself is actually the size of the entire map of Skyrim, your room is actually just the closet from Harry Potter. And your badass Berkeley grad bunkmate, who you share this sweet Harry Potter closet with, has trained himself to circular breathe in his sleep, which you will hear every single night. You will get to play seven nights a week, but contrary to what you thought you knew about the ocean, there is no Wi-Fi in the ocean. So say goodbye to those 150 Instagram views you were hoping to get for that sick pocket you were putting down on Sweet Caroline for the 27th time in a row. Worship musician. Worship musician. You either haven't been to church since you were 13, or you've already been playing this gig for free since you were 13. This is the most consistent and usually well-paying work you can get. God rested on a Sunday so you can wake up at 6 a.m. and go to work. You can look forward to playing songs by bands like Hillsong United, Hillsong Worship, Hillsong, and probably others. You have not played music with better gear since hanging out in your boomer uncle's $20,000 garage, he refers to as a studio, to avoid hanging out with his wife, where he instead works on Eric Clapton covers, but skips the F, D minor, and any bar chord that may come up. This gig will most likely supply you with charts, tablets, have everything preset and struck like clockwork. You'll usually get a track with in-ears shouting things like chorus and verse in a voice of a disassociated Siri who stumbled in after day drinking. This is absolutely necessary for the music. Otherwise, how would everybody know that the chorus was gonna come in on the one chord? You may also be perpetually joined by audience members who are given a microphone to fill in the harmonies that they choose. But for them, every chord is an alt chord because it's not about the notes, it's about the message. Original music. You are a guitar player. The practice for you usually requires drinking or smoking weed before you even touch an instrument. You have more Facebook profile photos of you with your instrument than scales you know, and you own more guitar pedals than gigs you've ever played in your life. You are a tone god, and nothing will stop you from finding your sound which is most likely a voice drowned in reverb and a guitar drowned in chorus. You record your music in a basement, which you tell people about constantly. Every song is about how strange it is to be alive, and you describe your music with words like pastel, or arduous, or neutral milk. When explaining songs to other bandmates, you don't have to worry about theory or using your ears, because as long as you can count to 12, we can use the superior language of fret numbers and ultimateguitar.com. Your entire career is founded out of hitting the right buttons like a Grand Theft Auto cheat code to avoid the wand level. You complain about Spotify not paying its artists while your band's tracks sit under a thousand plays for all eternity until you guys break up because of creative differences. You either hate John Mayer or you love John Mayer, but you steal his melodies either way. Your parents are not proud of you, but your social media game is on point. 2,000 friends on Facebook, 1,000 followers on Instagram, not too bad. And everybody in the local scene knows what cigarettes you smoke because you tell them. They're American Spears. You bummed them for me. Boy, we learned a lot today, didn't we? Hopefully by now you should have kind of an idea of what you're gonna do with your musical career. Lots of cool options. 
But there's one more important one we need to talk about. Sir.